A few years back, I remember I was a big fan of Huawei's premium flagship phones and Honor's budget and mid-ranges phones because they were so value for money. So when I heard that Honor is making a comeback in India, my expectations were right here. But when I used the new Honor 90, my expectations... Look, Honor is practically a new brand in India right now. And when a new brand launches its first phone, you expect the best. You expect the phone to be cutting edge, bring a big USP, be competitive, exciting. And the problem with the new Honor 90 is that this isn't any of that. Let me get into detail. See, first of all, there are things I like about this phone. This design, for example, is really premium. I like the matte glass back in this green variant, and this has a quad curved display, which means it's curved from all four sides. And I like that the glass on the sides is curved and not the screen area, so no accidental touches. And this gives the phone a very premium look. The screen here is also really good. It's packed with all the features and specs, as you can see, and it looks really nice. It's very bright. And I love how much control you get, be it the option to choose screen resolution, the refresh rate, and this has a lot of eye protection features, be it the crazy PWM dimming at 3840 hertz, hardware level low blue light, or Carcadian night display. I also love how sleek this phone is. I mean, for a phone that packs in a 5000 mAh battery, this is very sleek at 7.8 millimeters and also lightweight at 183 grams. This is just a phone that's very nice to hold. Now, one thing to note, the Honor 90 does not come with a charger in the box, but, but, but Honor has confirmed to us that in India, they will be providing a charger separately for free. Anyway, since I'm talking about the things I like, the cameras here are pretty good. This has a 200 megapixel main camera and a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, which also works as a macro camera. The front camera is packed to a 50 megapixel sensor that can do 4K videos. Now, what really interested me is that there are a number of cool camera tricks here. For example, I can shoot a video and switch between the main camera, the ultra wide angle camera, and the front camera while shooting a video in 4K. This is impressive because even now, only a few phones can do this. I also like this AI mode in video, which suggests things depending on the people in the frame. It suggests portrait video when one person is in the frame. It suggests a solo cut mode with multiple people, which lets you track one person in a group, kind of aimed at concerts or performances. There's also multi-video mode with different styles and even different templates to choose from. And it's not just these cool camera tricks. The phone takes some really good shots, especially in daytime. I mean, if you look at the photos, colors look punchy, but not too saturated. There is good detail in the 12 megapixel shots thanks to the 200 megapixel sensors, pixel binning. HDR is also good, and so are the portrait mode shots. Now, in low light, the night mode automatically turns on, and mostly the photos are pleasing. But since there's no OIS here, which honestly I expected, sometimes the photo can turn out a little blurry. As for videos, there's no OIS, but videos are fairly stable thanks to EIS and a little bit of cropping, and the quality is good to decent-ish. See, the Honor 90's cameras, display, and even the design are good. Plus, it has all the 5G bands, NFC, there's also carrier aggregation support. But my problem with this phone is that for its rumored price of 30 to 35K, this has a number of features missing. I mean, there's only a single speaker here at the bottom, no stereo speakers, which you, by the way, find even on budget smartphones now. There's no IP rating, no wireless charging, and like I mentioned, there's no OIS. Now, this would have been all okay if this phone had a crazy performance or very clean software experience, but this does not have any of that. The Honor 90 is part with the Snapdragon 7 Gen 1 Accelerated Edition, accelerated because it has a slightly higher clock speed than the regular version. And I like that the base variant here has 256 GB storage and it's good, but there are a couple of doubts. One, Honor mentions UFS 3.1 and LPDDR5 RAM, but when we ran the storage test, the Honor 90 storage is shown as UFS 2 and the speeds are pretty low compared to the Poco F5. And not just storage, even the RAM speeds are lower and this is kind of strange. Another big doubt is that why did Honor go for Snapdragon 7 Gen 1 when there's a more powerful, newer 7 Plus Gen 2 available in a phone like the Poco F5 which costs below 30k. As you can see in this comparison, 7 Plus Gen 2 is way more powerful compared to 7 Gen 1. It has a more powerful powerful X2 performance score, a more powerful GPU. I mean, you can see the huge difference in Antutu scores as well as Geekbench. See, the 7 Gen 1 processor in this price range just isn't very impressive. Now, credit where due, Snapdragon 7 Gen 1 is based out of Samsung's 4 nanometer process and Samsung made chipsets are known for having throttling issues, heating issues, but this phone surprisingly does not have any of that. The Honor 90 does well in CPU throttling tests and even when gaming or running benchmarks, the phone does not heat up at all. The phone also runs smooth and nice in day-to-day -day usage and gaming is also lag-free so the performance is good, but the price to performance ratio is not very good. When it comes to the software experience, this has Honor's Magic OS 7.1 on top of Android 13, and this has these pre-installed apps, the Honor App Store, Honor's Themes app, the My Honor app, which by the way does not even have India as one of the supported countries. Anyway, Magic OS has all the features you expect from an Android skin, and as for updates, this will get two OS updates and three years of security patches, which is not the best support, but it is what it is. Then there's the fact that when you set up this phone, you get this enhanced services page, which mostly people will just enable, but if you look into it, you will see it gives a ton of 
want permissions to Honor app, be it the My Honor app or Yo-Yo Suggestions or Honor Connect. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this. I mean, this just creates a lot of issues with trust and not just this. The service centers part of the Honor devices in India are handled by a company called PSAB Global. And I've seen a lot of negative Honor Magic with reviews citing the service centers issue. So I'm just hoping they do better with Honor phones. Also do note that this device is made in China. Its country of origin is also in China. You can see it on the box. Now I know Honor plans to make phones in India starting next year. So hopefully the next Honor phones are made in India. Look to conclude things, when a new smartphone brand arrives, we expect that brand to solve a problem, be it updates, bloatware issues, security issues, or even something like the green light. We want a brand with commitment and right now, I don't see that with Honor. I mean, I recently saw Madhav Seth, the CEO of Honor India, mention in an interview that he wants to capture 5% market share in India with Honor and generate a revenue of 10,000 crores by 2024. I mean, this is clearly a money-minded approach. I mean, to get an idea, just look at nothing. All they talk about is creating a new experience, a fresh new OS, optimized devices, creating an ecosystem, while on the other hand, Honor just seems to be more focused on market share and revenue. Anyway, as for this phone, I'm just gonna skip it because this just seems like another Chinese smartphone. It's not a bad phone, but there's just nothing special about this phone. Having said that, I am looking forward to the next Honor smartphones, which will hopefully have a more competitive edge. I mean, it'll be interesting to see how Madhav Seth repeats the success of Realme with Honor smartphones. So yeah, we'll wait and see. Anyway, I will pin the price of the Honor 90 in the comment section down below. So make sure to check that out and give your thoughts on this phone in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.